Andy really knew what he wanted. He knew that he wanted that community. He wanted his town, Mayberry. He wanted to keep that community spirit and that kind of everybody pulling for each other. He wanted to keep that right front and center. And it was all done because people believed in the show and they think that the show had value. And it does. If you, All you gotta do is, is watch one. I'm in the exact location where they filmed the show open to the Andy Griffith Show. That's right, many, many years ago. During pre-production of our feature film, Mayberry Man, a movie inspired by the Andy Griffith Show, I had a chance to chat with Clint Howard, Ron Howard's younger brother, who played little Leon on the show. He was the one always trying to share his peanut butter and jelly sandwich. No, thank you, Leon. I asked Clint to share some of his family's memories from the set, along with some rare behind the scenes footage. We even took a trip to Myers Lake. You know, Leon's never been to Myers Lake. I think I'm gonna check it out. You know, I was curious about coming up here and seeing the, you know, where they shot the beginning of the Andy Griffith Show, but I guess it's an active production zone here. And I can see why they would wanna come here and shoot. It's, uh, you know, big old trees and, and, and uh, you know, it's nice. Now it's the thing, when, you know, when they did the opening se sequence, it wasn't like they spent a lot of time on it. The business was, has always been about efficiency. And you know, they, they would do an Andy Griffith show in three days. They would rehearse for two, and then in three days they would shoot an episode. And uh, you know, the days spent rehearsing and working on the material uh, were days well served. If I see it on, if I'm flipping through channels and I see it on, I will, I will stay with it, and nine times out of 10, I'll stay with it till the end of the episode. I, you know, they're, they're really well done shows. And that's Reggie, the, the prop man. I do remember, especially when they went outdoors, when uh, they shot you know, outside in Culver City, or they shot here at Franklin, um, it was kind of a big deal. And I think it was a good opportunity for mom to get out of the house. So for a lot of times, you know, I would be towed along. I, of course, you know, when you're four or five years old, you really can't say, no, I don't want to go. You know, Bob Sweeney, who directed me later on in um, The Baileys About Boa, he was the nicest guy and got the greatest vibe. He was the one that directed most of the episodes for the first five years. And I'm sure he's in there. Um, it, the times, and this, this happens with a lot of shows, it, when, they have it, when they're mostly inside and they have a chance to go shoot outside, the crew is so happy to be outdoors. And it was such a break to, to actually spend a day where you're not in the soundstage all day that uh, they were, everybody was always in a good mood. Um, it's really interesting. I, I can't really pick them out. You know, there was a time in the Andy Griffith Show, if you go back and see behind the scenes footage, the grips and the crew members all wore shirts and ties. I mean, these, they didn't look like grips. They looked like businessmen. It just, the, it was the protocol. You know, right from the beginning, uh, th this is what I hear from dad. Andy really knew what he wanted. He knew that he wanted that community. He wanted his town, Mayberry. Mount Airy, Andy's hometown. He wanted to keep that community spirit and that kind of everybody pulling for each other. Um, he wanted to keep that right front and center. He wasn't listening to the networks. Uh, in fact, the network couldn't even give him notes. You know, things were becoming so urbanized. And yet the Andy Griffith Show came out and became successful, and the New York executives just didn't know how to note the story. They didn't, it was so off the map, off the map from what the networks were trying to do, and yet it was successful. And um, boy, you gotta, gotta give Andy a lot of credit for that, because he's, he's the one that laid it out there, and he believed in it. He gotta put a t good team of people around him, and uh, boy, and it was all done because people believed in the show, and they think that the show had value, and it does. If you, all you gotta do is, is watch one. Oh look, there I am. Now, you know, those masks 
dad got a bunch of ma horror masks. A friend of his had a special effects house that went bankrupt, and they had to have a fire sale. And when I was probably six or seven years old, um, dad needed to help the guy out. You know what, he went down there and bought some of the stuff. And it was all cheesy stuff from the 50s, but Dad had a whole collection of monster masks and all sorts of gizmos from like Ed Wood movies and stuff. And you know, our house was big fun. I remember mom and dad talking about what they were gonna, the color they were gonna choose to paint the inside of the house and even the color of the wardrobe. Because, you know, when it was black and white, they didn't, they, they didn't really care. And then they were hit with this whole Technicolor explosion and it was became a big tool, you know? Well, how do you spiff up the sheriff? You know, well, you can't, you know, you can't make, put him in a clown suit. Dad was always a great sport because, you know, dad, he, he, he parented like a parent, but there was a lot of kid inside of him. And he was always, if not dreaming, he was always, speculating he was, I, dad was a great guy and uh boy i miss him and you know it's 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 i'm lucky because my business includes a lot of cameras and a lot of film and tape and i'm so lucky that i have dad and mom in a lot of footage because it's great for me to go back and look at this stuff i mean i don't think for a second i get jaded and i don't feel some pangs of emotion when I see home movies like this, you know. I also got to remember the time mom is stomping her feet and screaming like a banshee. Those are things I also got to bring to the table because that was part of the Howard family too. Because not every day is a happy, happy, happy day in the Howard family. Well, I'll tell you what, we, you know, uh, Ron and I give dad the credit, you know, and, and dad was with us nurturing us as actors and stuff, but mom was really, you know, very powerful because, you know, she was right there for everybody too. She was, she was the unsung hero and, you know, um, she always had dinner ready. She may not have been the best cook in the world and she grew up at a time when canned food was good, so we had a lot of canned vegetables in our house which in retrospect was probably not the most nutritious thing in the world, but uh, she did have us, she did make us dinner and, and, and she was there. And you know, when dad would go off and be a little, not go off, he would be a little aloof. You know, mom could, could stomp her foot down and, and put order back in the house. This is now, this is, in, this is where they shot the neighborhood. I, that, that was fun. To go and sh and shoot, or to go to go and be outdoors, um, where they shot the streets of, of Mayberry, it, it was a blast. I always found it really exciting that you know show business streets aren't very long. Like a block is very short, and it, I could run down to the end of the block, and it was only like three houses, you know, back and forth. I I like the compact nature of a back lot. I have great memories, you know, I'm the only person that, that when Ron got the dream to be a director and nobody was giving him the time of day. I mean, when he was 14 years old, I was nine. When he was 15 years old, I was 10. And, and you know, we were, we're real close. We were, we were very close then. And, um, you know, it gave him the, the nerve, not the nerve, it just, it gave him the momentum. When people said no, it made him want to try harder. And uh, that's one thing that Ron's done is, is, you know, Ron, from the time he first had his first opportunity, he has been putting his foot on the gas the entire time. And that is rare in this town. People that will be successful and then want to step up and do it again real quick. And, and, you know, a lot of people like to have success for a couple of movies and take a year off. Mm -hmm. And um, Ron always saw that as the kiss of death. And I think that uh, he's pretty accurate. I think Ron's sort of work it, workaholic nature, it's done, it's fared well for him.
Well, hey, if you just like that clip, hit the like button. There's gonna be plenty more.